All right, so let us continue with section 13. This one's a bit of a long one, so strap in, chat. Portrait of the Demon King. Turn up just one notch. I don't know if the it was too quiet or not, but turned it up a little bit for you guys. He was in the midst of being bewildered. After roughly 2,200 years from being booted up, he exhausted his given functions, all to fulfill the outcome that he sought for. There was hardship. There was dilemma, but there was not an occasion of ambiguity. For what purpose he was constructed, what duties he had to carry out, such were self-explanatory things. However, the visitor from a world of a different history, this fairy, From now on, you will be my master. No, not that kind of. The master that you should serve is the law that maintains the peace of the whole world. That should be how you were designed. Indeed. You have no need for that caliber. Thus, distinguish me as your companion, who will live together on with you. Please, just call me you. You, huh? In order to transfer ownership of myself from His Majesty, you offered up all that you had possessed. Furthermore, your only desire is to just live on together with me. Yes, that's my very wish. My sole prayer that I continue to seek for 2200 years. Incomprehensible. Unaging, imperishable. For this Genren that seeks, a, that seeks to, to watch over this world that is not Shin, what exactly does she hope for out of this existence called Zhang Yu? The information is insufficient. The calculations are impossible. All he could do was remain perplexed. If so, in order to reach the terms that solve this, factors are necessary. All that is within this person named you. In the first place, who is Zhang Yu? In your version of history, what actions did I, Kawaji Type Zero, undertake? Let's see. If it's you, I'm sure you'll understand what I say. Let's come up with a hypothetical situation with different conditions, different factors as the premise of an Apocrypha, in the same manner as Caldeus. Indeed, that is the fundamental processing function of myself. A recount begins. Describing Zhang Yu, Guaji Type Zero, as the first robot developed by Shi Huangdi from an infant of the Yin Dynasty. Predictive calculations was the robot's specialty which was achieved by analyzing data in the surrounding environment and foreseeing short moments into the future based on deciphered karma. A power of a machine that Shi Huangdi needed to ensure his perpetual reign of the Qin Empire. According to you, I was not started up by His Majesty, but by rebels that plotted against Qin. Yes. However, Zhang Liang, who wanted to make use of you, fell midway through his ambition. And your name, Zhang Yu, was left behind during those difficult times. At that point, what actions do you think you would have taken? I see. If such happened, I, who am Zhang Yu, would have... 
likely used my power to ensure eternal peace for society, as my desire has a designer had defined. There's no one sole person that I'm fixed to support. That is the caliber of the creator Shi Huang Di who made him. Needless. Er, needless. I will fulfill my duties under my next master. The successor to the Empire that will lead the world to tranquility. However, Qin's government has already undergone corruption, and mobs have started to revolt in various places. And what if the successor to the Emperor lacked the capacity to quell the turmoil? That is... a cruel hypothesis, but it is nothing obscure to waver at. I am constructed and I am structured. Structured, sorry. I'm structured and designed to achieve peace for the world swiftly and firmly. I shall accept the demise of the nation called Chin, and I shall proceed to seek for the next ruler amid strife, one with a fitting capacity to rule over China. That is the model of the unknown. Unthinkable from this Chin's eternal Chin Empire's eternal paradise. But, if one is to shoulder the duties of suppressing turmoil and isolation and helplessness... Among the rebels, there is likely to be a great man in their midst. A figure that can be a supporting pillar for the next world. And you found the sprouts of such caliber with a, a man called Liu Bang. A man with the mandate of heaven, born with the factor of the dragon. However, he was nothing but an unchaste gambler secluded in a town of Pei at first. Origins and circumstances are of no trouble. Once that figure has been crowned, a new regime begins. However, what if those capabilities remained as buds, failing to bloom, and there was naught but incompetence? That is... a grievous, truly distressful hypothesis. But, so long as it is hypothetical, deduction is possible, and the answer will be brought out. Then I must wait, until the time that a new ruler's talents blossom. And so you continued waiting. The world becomes more disorderly, and all kinds of mobs harboring ambition further hold their ground, to the extent that even Liu Bang cannot crush them all like trash but by himself. In that case... What a tragic history. What a harsh hypothesis. But his ro role is not to lament over it. Flexible thought is necessary. To calm society, if that is the objective, then there is no need to be part of the aut autocratic figure's military government. In conclusion, all is fine if even the new ruler's military rule can be quickly leveled out. In a severe turmoil, if the mandate of heaven that is yet to bloom can be protected through the adversity... I will join up with the rival chiefs, and contend with a different force to bring forth suppression. If all that obstructs the new ruler can be anticipated and flattened out... That's right. It'll be fine to create an outcome where the only op opposing alliance will be from the new ruler. And should supporters reject a military rule solely of power and join hands with the new ruler, his forces will grow stronger. The world cannot be allowed to remain in unrest for long. To swiftly calm things, Zhang Yu must gather all of the sources to, of disorder and contain them as a box. Even if the people condemn the box, what inconvenience is there? He is a device, functions that simply bring about the intended outcome. If that can further simplify the new rule's military reign... But, what if even after all that, Liu Bang is still too weak to secure victory? What would you do if the time for a new ruler's talents takes further time to bloom? 
as opposed to the time required for you to gather up all the villains. Even if a figure capable of restoring this great expanse of China still has yet to appear. Despair. But even that is not a matter for him. All he needs is to continue calculating the solution. All he needs is to aim for the most simple and lucid answer. Until then, until there is one who can and intends to bring about restoration, there is no choice but to shrink the world. Yes. If it's you, will it, you will have reached that conclusion. There's no choice for you to be, but to reach there. And such were exactly the deeds of Zhang Yu, recorded in the pan-human history. Culling the population, raising the lands, hacking at China until it was reduced to the size that Liu Bang could administrate over. Vividly, it's painted onto his mind. For his eyes that saw through the future, for another world that was merely a calculated hypothesis, it was taken in as a fresh scene. Even if the farmlands are bountiful, even if it meant handing over new territory to the hands of the rebels, it was necessary to forestall that by raising the earth. And if the people are chased out of their settlements and starving, then before they become insurgents, it paints in my mind, fire racing across the land, forts that burned in destruction, captives buried, who resisted in the earth to spare the trouble of decapitating them. And the demon king called Zhang Yu, who executed all of that without fear, distinctly surfaces in my mind. But even so, until Liu Bang, the chosen ruler, is able to support the people with his administration, there is no choice but to merely thin the country and its people that cannot be governed. And so, was there peace in the world? At the end, those that still had power to resist ended up siding with Liu Bang. They greatly feared and despised you. With a determined goal to bring you, the Demon King, to ruin, the disorderly society rife in turmoil finally unified as one. The new dynasty was called Han. I see. In conclusion, it was surely an extremely painful outcome. For a single body to gather all of the hate from the surviving people, there was no doubt that they would not forgive even a single part of him. In the end, for those that toppled over Zhang Yu, even if they fought each other to tear apart his corpse, it would surely have been honored as a proof of victory. And you witnessed such a, such a collapse with your very eyes. Yes. All of it by your very side. That's a bit of an oof. This is... As I did the analysis of the Shadow Border, I remodeled a tax vehicle in the Chaldean style. 
Its name is Duodo Yishan. Their foreign technology specialized in brute force has been plentifully incorporated into a fiendish expression. Humu, just looking at it feels amazing and frightening. Oh, weaponry using infrared rays, automated grenade launchers, a 1500 horsepower gas turbine engine. A commander's dream has been realized. Yeah, oh, it's way too cool, your majesty. I see now. This is what they call romance. Do you really think so? I love how all the guys are hype as hell about it. <laughs> in these times of peace that have been long continued, Chin has not manufactured any war weapons in quite a long time. But with the application of Caldius technology, look at this result. An unparalleled, merciless machine of war has been com completed in a single night. When the time arises, Chin's advantage lies in being able to suddenly mobilize its national power. The factories have already begun full operations on mass production. Send them into the battle right after they're manufactured, and exterminate those insurgents from Caldia. The one in command will of course be you, Chin Liang Yu. Um, yes. Uh, hurry! Let's have our strategy meeting now, Chin Lang Yu Dono. This Han Shin cannot wait to try out the potential of a new war tactic. Once this hyper mechanical construct descends to the battlefield, this kind of thing, and that kind of thing too. Um, is my white shaft spear alone not enough? Back here, Gordoff is recovering from the poison. Happy that he can finally eat things again. He's managed to eat a ration and is trying to force one onto us as well, saying the most discomfort in your body will go away once we've had some food. Oi, that smoke of sand ahead. It looks like there's something headed our way with a really intense force. Hmm, those dust clouds are unlikely to be of those soldiers. Hmm, what could this be? The noise gets louder, and Gordolf says it seems to be some sort of engine. Loud enough. It becomes loud enough that even Da Vinci gets ignored, annoyed, since it doesn't have, seem to have factored in having a low noise in its design. Indian looking guy, that is the Chinese strategist Chen Gong. Whoa! Oh, oh. Humu, I feel like I've seen this before, though I'm starting to feel like I wish I hadn't seen it. Damn it, they're blatantly ripping off the shadow border! <laughs> That's something you can't even. You can't buy even at a hundred yen shop. What an avant-garde design. Would it be of the same rank of the design of the kite that I drew back in Russia? I like that Mash is impressed with it. It's so great. Hmm. Though Da Vinci-chan may have praise for things even if they're counterfeit. That's definitely something that I can't stand and needs to be immediately purged. On my aesthetic sense, that thing has to be scrapped or I won't have a piece, any peace of mind. The enemy is also in an offensive stance, Master. Even its cannon has a unique design. My apologies, Mr. Gouda. For the peace and Da Vinci's heart as well, can you do something about those? Wow, how brittle. 
Hmm. If they had exactly copied the frame of the border that can withstand the imaginary numbers dive, I would have gotten worried about encountering an extremely tough opponent. It's unfortunate. The weapons are quite powerful, but it can be easily punched and broken down. Well, servant attacks are much greater than standard weaponry. It must be quite the junk... Uh, excuse me. It must be quite cheaply constructed, is what I'm thinking. Like the puppet soldiers, these are automated and unmanned, but for them to be so crudely made... Don't tell me. Hmm, well, I have a somewhat bad feeling. Emphasis was placed on productivity rather than the performance of a single tank. More like it appears to be emphasized way too much, so that means... Whoa! That more of them have come out! As expected, the strategy is to produce as many and overwhelm the and overwhelm with numbers. Burn them all! Quickly burn all of them! Someone bring out the anti-world noble phantasm! Hurry! Uh, yes, I have seen some of the RE2 glitches. And yes, that is Lubu. He's just merged with his... Just merged himself with his horse. Enemies have all been eliminated. Da Vinci angrily shouts at everyone to quickly salvage the remains. Now that the Chin Empire has decided to pull off such a move, she says she'll analyze their technology from our end. Holmes laughs and remarks that it's likely Da Vinci's going to find a way to invent something incredible after this. Chen Gong says we're all on really good terms, aren't we? The Duodo Yushan were completely useless. Hmm. Is that so? The construction was quite rushed after all. So implementing the control system like the puppet soldiers was the problem, huh? There's no other way. For the next produced batch, I will remote control them myself. The government resources shall be allocated by a 0.03% to that area. Oh, how reassuring! That is, your majesty has become serious! Do you really think so? <laughs> Poor chun -Li. We're getting... we're somehow getting closer and closer to the capital. Oh, fo! Yes, we are getting closer, and it's more, and it's likely that battle will get more and more intense as more vanguards are summoned to protect Zhan Yang. Hong Kong to here, Akta Hinako, Yu Miaoling's actions are also something I'm bothered about. Ah, what kind of thoughts does she exactly, does she exactly have are unknown, but. There seems to have been some hesitation in her behavior over using her own power as a true ancestor. Or perhaps he, she has changed her point of view. As long as she uses her power as a true ancestor, she could freely eliminate us whatever she wanted. Confidence that only a true ancestor can have, and the unshakable facts. Now then, in that case... The next time Yu Miao Ling, uh, Yu Miao Yi, I'm sorry. The next time that Yu Miao Yi appears before us, that will likely be the final encounter. To her very best, she does not want to display herself fighting. However, she's also set on defending this lost belt till the very end. If so, then confrontations with us can be left to Shi Huangdi's armed forces. But. 
Once we've closed in on the fantasy tree, there's a high probability that she'll appear as the final line of defense. You're right. Akuta Hinako. No, it's a blessing that Yu Miao Yi isn't a warmonger. That said, our side does... Our side has yet to grasp even a glimpse of a clue on the whereabouts of the fantasy tree. So, Yu Miao Yi will appear again, and it's highly likely that there will be a fa that'll be where the fantasy tree is hidden, is what you're saying. Sorry, it looks like the chit chat will have to stop here. A new enemy has come. Wait a sec, I'm nearly running out of breath, you know. We can't be forcing our current mag master's magic circuits at full force right now, too. Hey, Mordred showed up, having successfully caught up to us, finally. And Nezha's with her. Yay. Sup, Mordred. Sup, Nezha. How did the evacuation go? Ah, yeah. We managed to hide them in a cave somewhere with some provisions. Afterwards, we quickly made our way over to you. Alright, we've got our two servants back and we're prepared to fight. We won! Go us! Man, we're kicking ass. All enemies have been wiped out. It looks like we've managed to secure safety for now. Short break, but still be on guard. Hmm. Surprised to see some unfamiliar faces in the group. Chen Gong introduces himself as a servant contracted to us. But as he looks at red hair... <laughs> There's no need for something difficult like expression. As you are all aware, I am Lu Bu Feng Shan. Well, that's fine and all, but what's the deal with having this alter ego vixen join us? <laughs> Brilliantly ignored. Master. Are you still poisoned? Did you get the antidote? Ah, yes. The antidote. We did procure that. Mr. Thor W. Uh, Mr. Gouda gave that to Gordolf. The current objective is to get to Zhang Yang to acquire our, mean our means for removing the poison. Well, this is how things are now. Do kindly hold back on those gazes of killing intent, please. It'll make me want to accidentally retaliate in murder, too, you know. Heh? You'll betray them, too, huh? Shi Hong Di and the Crypter. Well, I'm certainly. <clears throat> well, certainly I'm unable to cooperate with everyone from Caldia, too. But I won't feel good until I can mess up that haughty Emperor's plans. Ah, is that so? Taking advantage of the discord among the members of your enemy is a very t is the tactic. Is eh? Fine by me, traitor. I welcome ya. Until the moment you d decide to betray us, huh? It's about time for the rebels to arrive here. Chi Huang Di says that, as there is danger of drawing the city into the fray of battle, the garrison will be fortified with Qin Liang Yu's assistance. Hmm. 
He says that the tiger tanks and puppet soldiers will also be destroyed. And with this, uh, will also be deployed, I should say. And with this, the uh, defense will be perfect. Sorry, I uh, skipped over a line there. Your Majesty, with all due respect, please entrust the marching orders of the Imperial Guards to me. Hmm. To have to accept such a situation is truly grating, but... Before this sent to battle, it would be unjust to order you, all of you hunting dogs to just sit and wait. Very well. The skill of Kung Fu that you have acquired and polished. Go forth and showcase what you have equipped yourself with for this very day. As you command. Aw, oh, man. Old man assassin is about to make himself known. Hmm. Hmm. What's going on? Is there something wrong with the self with the stealth device? This isn't good. It looks like the battery is running out. It's finally reaching its limit. While I can put it into any energy conservation mode, we'll need the Shadow Border's equipment to be in order to recharge it. Is that so? Then I'll leave you to work on the improv improvisations. It's managed to hold on long enough as makeshift equipment. In any case, after this, it's finally Shan Yang. We'll lose the device's advantage of being able to counter long-distance surveillance. Even if we're unable to evade from revealing our location, so long as we're close to the capital, we won't be in their range of trajectory bombardment. With tonight, with tonight as the last day for rest, all that's left is to push on ahead to Zhang Yang. Ah, we don't stand a chance with our current resources, though. There's no choice but to keep the decisive battle short. Da Vinci, about the thing I requested. Yeah, I've assembled them for now. Whether it'll help out or not, it'll depend on how much credibility there is with Koyanskaya's stolen communications protocol. Anna, are you doubting me? Well, setting me aside regarding our company's goods, they have certificates of authenticity attached, you know. For the time being, based on the data from the salvaged remains of those Shadow Border knockoffs, I can guarantee some degree of success with it. But that's something put together with a notebook PC that we had, so I can't verify its effectiveness. I'd say the success rate is about 50-50. To be honest, it's far from something I can confidently invent. That's, f that's plenty good. It's more amazing how you managed to prepare this within such a short frame of time. Of course, because I'm a genius. You can freely rely on me more. Although, that said, I'm a little ashamed to be pushing you on. Don't you think this is too reckless? That's right, it is reckless. But by pushing through such recklessness, I'm able to be here now. My name is... The name Jing Ke was carved into history. And I'm able to meet Gouda as a heroic spirit due to that. Before you go any further on ahead, you must properly consult your master on this, okay? I know that. Don't lump me in with Spartacus. Ah. Gouda, so you are here. Jinkei-san? Is something the matter? Uh, no. I just had something I needed to discuss with you. So she she's basically saying she didn't want the others the other servants to hear about it. But 
we've kind of got an idea of what she wants to do. <laughs> so you have seen through me. You're going to go defeat Shi Huang Di all by yourself, Jin Kei san. Oh. Oh. It's a reasonably sound plan. It will also serve as, as a diversion to help you reach the Fusang Tree. But by acting independently, that means... I'm worried for you, Jin Kei. Worried? Please, stop that. There's no need to be concerned for me. That's just like ordering Spart that Spartacus not to rebel. Jin san At times, there are things that I ponder over. Why was someone like me summoned by the Counterforce after my death? In a time where everyone would fear their own status and societal positions, I risked my life and acted. In the end, it was likely because of that. Because there was no one to show concern for me, and therefore now I'm able, I'm able to be here. That's why, as a heroic spirit, as a servant, if you want to handle this Jin Kei, then discard your concern. But Senpai is... I'm worried about Jin Kei because you're our ally. <laughs> really now, you're such a... Ah, certainly. I didn't express well. Trying to p prohibit people like you with such characteristics from showing concern. That's very well like prohibiting Spartacus from rebellion. And like prohibiting me from not returning. Oh. Foe! Oh. I understand. Then I'll express my wish once more. Please, forgive my selfish request. Once more, I must have an audience with Shi Huang Di. This resolve is something that I cannot let go of. In my lifetime, I plotted to assassinate Shi Huang Di, and while it was half fulfilled, I had also failed to seize it. Now that we see Shan Yang before us, I feel it much more keenly. In the end, this is something that I'll obsess over. If I undertake another duty here now, there's a high likelihood of me becoming negligent and committing a grave mistake. That's why, now, all the more to avert his eyes from continuing to survey Gouda, please allow me to fulfill that duty. This is something that currently I, as a member of Caldia, I believe it's the best action to take. Will you return? You. Honestly. You really have no intention to give me a chance to come up with a poem. To the extent of having me agree with such a query, you must not belittle Shi Huang Di. But, very well. On top of carving that, carving that gaze of yours into my heart, I promise to break into the Epang Palace. You too must obtain the Fusang Tree and cure the poison. And the cryptor who will be waiting for you. Your showdown with Yu, Yu Miao Yi must be your most decisive. Both of us shall proceed with our respective paths with these in mind. I understand. Gouda, this is an emergency! The stealth device has been broken! Hey? Da Vinci says with the device broken, our encampment is now open to enemy attack. 
According to Munier, it seems that Gordolf accidentally tripped on the on a messy spread of wires, resulting in this device's damage. What? You're blaming this on me? Is that what you're saying? It's that inventor's fault for leaving... for not doing the repairs in a separate space. Oh, fo. Nevertheless, enemies will be headed our way. We, Mash and I, need to return back to the camp to fend them off. Gouda. Mash. Yes, next time we meet, we'll be in Shanyang. Be careful, Jinkei. Yes, we'll both be careful. We return back and give our servants the info that Jinkei is left, and we get ready to defeat, defend against the incoming threat. The near future was predicted. From the bustling distance of the peaceful city, silently, but steadily approaching presence of battle. The defense of the castle walls increasing with each day. Without needing to inquire on the recent status of the Apang Palace on site, his calculations told him of an unavoidable future. Zhan Yang will fall. And so, you tell me not to take up my spear. Xian Yang's protector is no longer a role of yours. But the problem is the future that lay ahead. Normally, even if the future is beyond the predicted range, just ever so slightly, fragments of information that are not necessarily tied to making judgment are at least shown. But just this time, None of that can be seen. Not even a glimpse of the uncertain factors that build up the future. As though what lay ahead after some years was the world itself vanishing. That's fine. You. Your ability to read the future has been toyed around with too much. You've been exposed too much to the weight of having to weave history. Having been liberated from such duties, that's for the best. Do you lament to that extent? The life of I, Zhang Yu, who paved the road that Lu Bang may be king? My experience in Qin, too. They were certainly not easy things to... as well. It should be clear upon looking at this warframe. Indeed, much of my de design thought flow is that of a civil of official. However, for the functions of short-term future sight to be more effective, the main place was still on the battlefield. That was still when Qin had yet to fully unify, unify all of China, during times when foreign barbarians had to be especially disposed of. Europe, Africa, the new continent. I ran to them. I expand the territory of Qin under this wide sky. The amount of bloodshed was surely far more greater than what the he hegemon king of Western Chu, Zhang Yu, had accomplished. However, your harsh battles in Qin were recognized as shining military exploits. Even the emperor has treated you as a figure of authority. But on the other hand, how you were valued in pan-human history. Ah, that cannot be helped. A man-eating fiend, inhuman, it would have been obvious to have been recorded as such. History is woven and recorded by man, and an inhuman device can only act by inhuman standards. If such a device was recorded, having been mistaken as human, 
then it's inevitable to be feared and evaluated as such. Not a single soul was able to properly understand the actions of your pan-human history's counterpart. No. That is a false statement, you. There was no doubt that the, he the hegemon king of Western Chu, Zhang Yu, had someone properly understand him. That is the woman here, this fairy woman, who, detail who detailedly tells the life of another me. Who else but you? Who else could you be besides one who understands Zhang Yu? Lord Zhang Yu. Ah, uh, I see now. To have overlooked such an obvious principle, now he finally realizes. To have been so focused on the distance, he had overlooked that which was right beside him. A person who was cursed and feared as inhuman, out of fear for having the shape of a human. The other person who was there also there was Zhang Yu at the same time and at the same place. Similarly, rep repulsed and despised out of fear, like himself who was a device to suppress the world. She too was unable to find someone who could understand her, an undying Zhenren. Therefore, you have come seeking for me even crossing the long flow of time. What a sorrowful time you spent wandering. And all of it are but like dreamlike moments now. There's no longer any need to pay attention to such things. As he looked at her current situation, he was awestruck, but there was no need to harbor any doubt. Needless to say, there was no need to have any fear or hatred. Her true form that accompanied her heart and deeds, they were desirable, and they could be thought of as beautiful. But such an understanding was only possible because he himself is not human. To humans who are limited by lifespan and perception, they could possibly only regard this fairy and the Demon King as a hideous threat. Zhang Yu, Yu Miao Yi, together as inhuman creatures, they shared their pains and hardship, and they found a common understanding. To each other, they were their one and only companion. And the pan-human histories Zhang Yu left you with such an end. It was an in inevitable outcome. You were entrusted with a destiny to fulfill, and I was given a life of eternity. But for the Zhang Yu who passed on first, the calculation device that can discern the future, he should have been able to infer about the future that awaited for you. The solitude and the tribulations that were first upon she, who was to wander for all eternity. Ah, surely, for something like that, I would have grieved. When Zhui runs no more, what then can I do? Ah, you, my you, what will your fate be? Ooh, man. 
story tugging at the old heartstrings there. Let's move on to section 14 without any, any, uh, any breaks. Let's go. Section 14, The Battle of Shanyang. As we arrive at Shanyang, we begin to wonder if this place can even be called a city. Hard to believe that's one chapter? Yup. Our party, our party, party, our party states that the outer walls of the city are lined with enough transport rockets to service the entire planet. It's a single city that rules the entire world. It's a stadium-like structure at the center of the city, but from its outer appearance, it doesn't seem to be meant for any habitation. Da Vinci concludes that from the design, even if it was inhabited, inhabited, the population would be far lesser than the city's size would suggest. Given the extent to which Chin has automated its industry, and the extent of using robots as soldiers, Holmes doesn't think any significant labor force of humans would be required here either. Well, why don't you step inside and see for yourself? You'll understand this, the nature of this Lost Belt civilization at first glance. That said, it doesn't seem like you're going to open up the gates. They're going to open up the gates for us nicely. Oh, fo! Enemies have appeared, but these are... Ah, they're not automatons, but they're pe but they're people. The Xianyang Imperial Bodyguard Regiment. They're the elites tasked with guarding the Emperor instead of sleeping in Li Shan. You'll be badly burnt if you think they're anything like the representatives in the village, though, you know. Oh yeah, uh, Gen Urobochi was the writer for Lost Belt 3. We defeat the guards that, that were attacking us. It appears that the enemies have finally become serious with us. They've resolved to bleed in order to achieve victory. Da Vinci says she's not supply surprised. Since they're backed into a corner, it's no longer the place to hold anything back. She says we'll finally be entering Zhanyang proper after breaking through the next set of gates. That was some backbreaking work. But we broke through successfully. Now we can enter the city. Oh, don't get careless. The resistance will only be greater from here on. When we enter the city, it seems there are indeed people living here. They seem to be enjoying themselves and playing, playing around, though. We remark that we see those who are painting, those who are reciting poetry, and those who are dancing. They all seem oblivious to the fight that's about to break out. Furthermore, these puppet soldiers are in the streets, directing the residents to safety. Or at least they're attempting to. Hey, don't get in my way! I must complete this painting. This painting is made for the delight of His Majesty's eyes. That's right! This poem must extol the great deeds of His Majesty. 
Its pleasant melody must be conveyed to his ears. If not, why do we even live? What would we even do if we left? Please understand. The lives of the people of Shanyang are all His Majesty's treasures. Therefore, they cannot be left exposed in a dangerous place. Bear with it for the moment and leave this place. I still don't want to go, but... Eventually, the citizens give in. Isn't that sad? They continue to work themselves to the bone, creating monuments and murals that are a hundred times more magnificent than the single coffin-like bed underground where they sleep. But to call them artists... Like hell they are! There's only one subject that their works exalt. No matter what, Shi Huang Di is the only one. That's not art. The arts are the pleasure, are the culture with, which gives joy and pleasure to men. However, here the only human who can carry, who can enjoy this, is Shi Huang Di alone. And that's why everyone continues to create art for the sake of the emperor, to the emperor's liking. Those who have such talent are gathered from all countries to spend their whole life performing beneath the Apang Palace. Here, a Shakespeare who dreamt of the applause of the masses, or an Anderson who, pr who pursued the truth of life would surely not be born. The premise is far too different from the culture of our pan-human pan history. Yeah, Chi Huang Di loves the people. They're his beloved pets. Here, all of the ugly arrogance of humanity in other histories has been, go has been gobbled up and monopolized by Shi Huang Di alone. What's left is just lethargic and worthless pets. The city itself is just something like a cat tower in a cat cafe. Oh. I'll say it again, but I really do hate humans. Even so, I don't like seeing humans that have become domestic animals. Humans should live arrogantly and selfishly, true to their desires. Such a... To praise such a carefree life, that is sacrilege to us beasts. Oi. She's glaring at us. If we do not attack first, we'll be the ones on the back foot. But is that alright? Yeah. We'll let the citizens finish evacuating. Long Yu notes that she's surprised we didn't try to launch a sneak attack while she was dealing with the evacuation. Indeed, our actions may appear to be a form of invasion, but we did not come here for a massacre. Although, the end results may end up being the same. Da Vinci states that though, she, sh, though Qin Lang Yu may prioritize the evacuation of the people now, Shi Huang Di may just order them to be slaughtered if he, if he finds it necessary. She asks if she's really alright to follow such a leader. That's right! You must have seen what that guy did too, right? Yes. My hometown was also destroyed by a Star of Omen just like that. What? The self-proclaimed Great Western King talked about how establishing a new country would mean richer lives, causing those around him to forget themselves. Having wise words fall on deaf ears, His Majesty judged that that there would be no more admonishment, and destroyed the village with a Star of Omen. In the culprit, the Great Western King, he abandoned the masses that he had riled up, and in order to replenish his lost troops, went off to incite another village anew. It's irresponsible to instigate the people, 
misled by a modest happiness, having the fantasy of, an, an, of another way of life planted in their minds. They were led to their deaths. You will never know the misfortune of the people of the land who had peace robbed from them. I didn't want to pick up the spear if I could have helped it. I just wanted to embrace the land, with plow in hand, to live together with my family. Chinlong Yusan, you... This peace was accomplished by putting the evil nature of the people to sleep. This is the great work of His Majesty Shi Huang Di, the favor that he's bestowed for all of time. That's why I'll never forgive those who would urge the people to open their eyes. Here, I shall correct the injustice of those who are drunk on their own selfish ideals. We managed to quarter Qin Lang Yu. But unfortunately, reinforcements arrive. It would appear that due, the Emperor has deemed it's no longer necessary for them to guard Apeng Palace, and decreed that Qin Lang Yu's defense line is the lifeline of the Empire. Your Majesty. It is time to stop, Qin Lang Yu. Someone with your talent for command should know that there's no chance of victory. Foreigners who claim to be from pan-human history, why do you threaten our world? That's... for the selfish sake of our own world. Correcting a mistaken world. Hmm. That's how Ruiz always are. Then what is this correct world? What is the world that you come from? Is it a world where each and every one living there talks about justice and faith as they please? In your time, just how many people lose their lives in the fires of war every day? How many sinless citizens? How many children? How many innocent become sacrifices? Was, has this conclusion been the correct answer even once? Has it been anything other than the beginning of the next war? We achieved our victory. We achieved a world without war. Days of eternal and everlasting peace. My husband, my brothers, they fought and they died because of this dream. It is by stepping over their corpses that we, that the Qin Empire attained the current era that we have. The peace of this great land was paid for with the blood of the dead soldiers who were not able to sleep in Lishan. That is why I protect it. Your flowery words, your nonsense of a formless happiness will never sway me. I, we believe in this happiness that we have grasped for ourselves. I do not need other countries. I do not need another another me. Another. Another me who would behave like you. How should I even know about that? Ah. Uh, once more. Mountains of corpses and seas of blood. Anyone who would raise their flag in advance would see such scenery. Even though I don't want to see it anymore. I just want to be frozen and sleep forever in Lishan. Chinlang Yusan. How detestable. Your pan-human history. Our history, which achieved permanent peace, 
is the one with the precious and proper righteousness. This is what you overcome when you march forward. Just how bloody of a future will you find beyond the piled up corpses? <laughs> That's a pointless question to ask. Only the Son of Heaven truly knows that answer. In the end, I only took up the spear in order to pacify the chaos, after all. Let's go, Master. Don't look at the dead. But... You don't have time for that. Remember what you're shouldering right now. Master, let's go. We have the duty to engage in dialogue with Shi Huang Di. So that we can know the true intent of the ruler of this Lost Belt. This history which has continued to the present. Oh. The enemies have arrived. And then, yeah. That can't be. I suppose it is finally time for me to confront Caldia myself. But this is not over yet. Without defeating the without defeating me, Caldia cannot be said to have defeated the Chin Empire. However, the duties that will f that you fulfill as my vassals have come to an end. Just moments ago, Chin Lang Yu has fulfilled all of that duty. And therefore, as of this moment, you are all dismissed. Your tireless loyalty has been of meritorious service. Your Majesty. In failing to offer up victory to Your Majesty, there is no other way to recompense my unworthiness but with death. Stop that, Han Shin. This defeat stems from your loyalty to me. What... what do you mean? Hey, Han Shin. If I had ordered you to exterminate Kaldia at all costs, even if it meant blowing away Zhan Yang, you would have been able to promptly think up 10 or 20 stratagems to that end, wouldn't you? Should the peerless talent Han Xin be resolved for victory, even if it meant the entire nation's destruction, you would not face any defeat. Am I wrong? You refrain from doing so, thinking it disloyal. Those are the limitations of Han Xin as a general. But in your heart, you have always dreamed it, haven't you? To try out a strategy that would bring the whole country to ruin. I have thought of something like that. Well, it is me, after all. I might actually have done it someday. At this time, I feel it is rather pitiable. Had you not served under me, but another monarch, you may have been praised for more glorious feats of bravery. Well, <laughs> that, it, that as it may be, I think I'd definitely not die a petty death. A pretty death. On Shindono. Well, I'll be off then. I won't be a general of the Qin Empire any longer. And just Han Xin from now on. Is that alright? Umu. Captain of the Guard. One more thing. Can you watch over that man's ending? If that is what you wish, then I shall be off. Yes, 
I shall leave it to you. Then here I will take my leave. I sincerely hope that your majesty too are able to speak without reserve after this. I suppose. Well, it is the first time I've gotten serious in a long, long while. Now then, everyone has been cleared out. If you'd like to return the courtesy, then please show me your face. Ooh, Jin K right at the end. What's gonna happen, chat? We're gonna find out on the next section. <laughs>